Lance is number one hip-hop station, Hot 107. Now, is the most energetic entertainer, Manny Supreme. I'm here today with a very talented artist, one of the hardest freestylers, I believe, of our generation that I've ever seen. It made me definitely turn to BET Hip Hop Awards. <laughs> Ken Ken is in the building. Yeah, what's up? With your company? With Minnie Ken. That's hard. Period. Can we first talk about that? I don't even want to start where everybody likes to start. You pulled the doll out. First off, were you the mastermind behind, like, I need a doll? And then, like, from the wardrobe to getting in Target, like... I mean, I for sure had a lot to do with the appearance and stuff like that. But it just really just came about. I knew one day it was going to happen because I am Ken, but yeah. I didn't think it was going to come that fast. Did you... Were you playing on the idea of, like, Barbie and Ken? Um, I wasn't. Well, I mean, actually, yeah, I, I was doing that because I got my name from Nikki because I'm a fan of Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. and she calls herself Barbie. Fire. So, yeah, I'm Ken Ken. So, where are you from originally? Chicago. So boom, you were in Chicago. How long? When did you come out to Atlanta? I moved to Atlanta when I turned 18. So I moved to LA first, and then I got a, a place here. Mm -hmm. Then I was like back and forth. So what was your life like before you decided to like start doing the whole rapping? I was just a regular ass kid going to school, being mm -hmm. bad, chilling. I could I could tell though, Jack, your, your charisma. I know you was popular in school though. Mm hmm. I was always a people's person. So where did like your first interest in music come about? Um, well, my father, he used to do music, but he ain't really like taking it serious because he was in the streets. So that was a little thing. But really, in like sixth grade, that's when I started doing music. Like I went home and I'm like, I started writing, putting like little videos online and stuff. Yeah. With, you have such an organic following, right? And it's because you just, like I said, I'm always thinking of the next step. What can you say has been like a true factor in identification with you being able to help show your fans like look this is can double in and how have you been able to like play on like the phrases that you have the catchy freestyles with just gaining that new audience i mean to be honest it's just like i just do what i like to do so like rapping is like literally, literally something that i like to do so i was just rapping mm -hmm. getting up getting cute doing content and just really just Staying true to the people That's and c connecting. So that was just me just living my life through social media and people liked it. That's fire. I think to think I'm a pretty good freestyler. <laughs> but then... Can you, can, can you freestyle like off the head? See, now back in the day we was in the lunchroom, I was being on the table. I was like Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, you know, you get a little bit older, the content <laughs> starts, so then you just start talking about a whole bunch of nothing. But... That's why I decided to stick with music and radio because like, I just love music. But then I knew I couldn't freestyle when I seen your walk freestyle. <laughs> I'm like, yo, like, so was that off the dog? Right. Did you write that? Um, we wrote that. Because I see y'all was in the car mm -hmm. and it was just like, boom, bam, boom. We like, we like, fuck it. So, like, how we used to do it, like, I, I come up with a line, he'll come up with a line, mm -hmm. he'll just match my energy. And that's how it just went about. What were, like, the ideas behind it, though? Because the first time I had seen it was on Twitter. Then I seen it on Facebook, and mind you, I don't know how I got on Facebook. Then I seen it. So it was like when your freestyles have started to go, and then out of all of your freestyles, which one has been your favorite? Hmm. I don't know. That's hard. I have a lot of freestyles. I have a lot of freestyles. I, th I brought a WAP because it just seemed like it was spur of the moment. Y'all was riding. It was just like, yo, let's get it. Let's get um, it. If I had a favorite, favorite I'm going to say my, um, what's the Lenaz X song? Industry baby, mm. industry yeah that that one industry something. Mm. I did a um a, re a freestyle for that and I like it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It seems like you keep a good friend group around you. I know that's always important with being in the industry and you know having a core fan base because there's a lot of leechers out there. Yeah, it is. When you are out, like how do you take it or do? I know a lot of people always come up to you, but have it has there ever been a situation where some people are trying to be like, oh, okay, let's hang out, let's be cool, just to try to. Oh, okay. Some of what you got going on, or like mm -hmm. the people that be near you. Do you care to elaborate on that? Um, yeah, I mean, it happened on a couple occasions, but you know, I mean, I'm like, I'm like I said, I'm a people's, per people's person, so I know how to deal with people. Like, you know, laugh it out, ha ha ha. Bitch, I ain't, I ain't gonna see you smoke. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you gotta play. That's definitely how you gotta play. Mm -hmm. Gotta continue to talk about viral moments, BT Hip Hop Awards. Mm -hmm. You know, I like what they're doing with the ciphers. Um, first off, how were you hit up about that? Like, where was you at at the time? When it was I like, was at home. It's time. At home in LA on the couch, mm -hmm. smoking a blunt. My manager called me and said, bitch, they want you for the cypher. I hung up. 
and had to like think about it for a second. And I called her back like, what? I'm like, yeah, they want you for the BET cycle. I'm like, ooh, they done fucked up. <laughs> so take us back to that day. Mm-hmm. But I know it was a long day of production, was it? Yes, and I was like sick. Really? Yes, I was sick. I I, I did not want to, I wanted to do it, but I didn't want to do it that day. I was asking her like, can we like try to do it another day? She's like, no, bitch, you got to do it today. It's now or never. Oh, all right, fuck it. So when you got there, how long was it? How long did it take? Um, it was probably like, I don't know, it's like an hour or two. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Because work with BET sometimes, you get it all day and all night. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't real bad. It was a nice, cool, chill thing. How do you think, because you know, you, you be popping your shit. When I see you on the ground, I see you on the ground. Do you think that you've arguably had one of the best cycles at BET? I don't know that. Oh, they had me. They had me on that motherfucker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I could. I could now, not be the best. When it aired, did you get a chance to actually go to the award show? Yeah. So how was that? That shit was crazy. So like, I think they played our side for last. Mm-hmm. So like, everybody else side for like, they was just watching and shit. Mm-hmm. But when they played Oz, you would have thought a bitch was performing. Say swear. Or won an award. I promise <laughs> you, they went up when they saw my face. I was so like emotional. It was just like so like, damn, yeah. this is crazy. Where you sitting in the area where people like. Yeah. Yeah, I was in like down. So like when when it started going up, like when it came on screen, mm-hmm. everybody went up, like literally went up, mm-hmm. and like I was just looking around. And motherfuckers were like, yeah, bitch, you did that. <laughs> <laughs> like, so how was the red carpet experience? It was it was so fun. I was so pretty, like a princess. Did you see any people that you were like ah, that you've been fans of that you finally got a chance to see in person? Um, no, I did not get to see nobody for real. Really? Now you mm-hmm. said you're a Nikki fan, right? I am. Like day one. I'm a day one Nikki fan. I my first time seeing Nikki was like fast out chick. After that, I went and like did my research and like saw everything else was like. What can you say that some things that Nikki has implemented in her career that you like take in for like okay, this what kids can want to do with Nikki? Um, give these bitches bars, give these bitches looks, yeah. and just keep the shit going and stop when I want to stop and when when she stop. That's fire. Has there been any new people that you've been in the studio with that you that you should let your fans know? <laughs> Not much I can say now. Okay, I feel, I feel. But you are working on the music. Yeah, I am working on the music. I'm actually finna drop a new project. Fire. Mm-hmm. You got the title? Yep. Let me disclose. Or is there, it's when you come back, we're going to unravel everything. I can tell you. It's called Busy Being Bad. Fire. What was the inspiration behind the title? I've just been busy being bad. So, you know, I felt like that was where I was at when I made that music, and it's time to get it out. For sure. And it's the summertime, so why not? So, you know, summertime, I was about to ask you, what are some new anthems that you jam in? Kia, 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 everything, Kia, Kia. All day, every day. All day. I really listen to, like, it's crazy because I hear, like, certain artists don't listen to that music. I really will listen to my music all the time. You just be straight. Having a fucking ball. I got like vast for different shit. So uh-huh. it's like, I could just listen to me all day. Now, you've had some performances, right? Mm-hmm. How has it been just being able to see your supporters in person and then like them rapping your lyrics and then them just coming up to you and just pouring out to you and it's like, I don't even know y'all for real, but y'all love me so much. <laughs> how is that interaction like and how has that been able to like help motivate you with continuing what you're doing? With you? It always motivates me. Like I love seeing the fans in person. Like that's one of my favorite parts about being a rapper or whatever. Um, it's just list vibes. Like, I'm a big person. I'm big on vibes. So, like, once I feel the vibe, it's just a vibe. And every time I get on stage, it's a vibe. That's fire. When you're in the studio, when you're creating, what's your initial thought process when you're making a song? Are you writing? Are you freestyling? We know you can freestyle, but have you ever sat down and been like, okay, let me tell you something about nothing? Yeah, all, all the time. I go into the studio. I listen to my music first mm-hmm. to just, you know, catch a vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, then I start playing beat. I uh, started just like freestyling, talking shit, but I'm just doing that for fun. Mm-hmm. And then I really sit there and like get to it. How often have you used a situation that you've been in in life, whether that's in a relationship with friends, with anybody, and implemented that in your music? All the time. What can you say? As, have there been any tracks specifically that you like? This for you, Nikki, because I don't fuck with you. Um, 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 um. Or you just. Popping it in a way where it's just like you and your friends. Can, I'm popping it in a way where fans can understand. Yeah, I'm popping it in a way of like the shoe fits you could wear it. Mm, but they know who they are. They know who they are. That's how you grow. What are two things on your artist bucket list this year? 
um, to get the biggest song of the year. And to just, you know, set out shows. Always get a bag. Every time. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you coming to chop. Thanks for having me with me. Look, I'm telling y'all, make sure y'all go order your mini. So it's mini cans. Mini can, Kia can. That's you me. Target. Only at Target. Only at Target. All Target. Another edition. Another digital episode we made a spring right here on Hot 107. Period.